everybody. Hi, so so excited to be here. My name's Tane Danger. I am the host and co-creator of this thing called the Theater of Public Policy. So uh, this whole event is a lunch and learn. And so this is part of the, this is the learning part of the event. You're already doing the lunch. You're doing a very good job. Now's the learning part. Um, so Theater of Public Policy. I always like to just start like this uh, to get everybody on the same page. So if you have never seen the Theater of Public Policy before, please applaud. That's good. That is the most applause that we get in a show. So what do we do? Uh, so we are going to talk to some very smart people up on stage, and then we have this team of amazing improvisers who's listening to all of it, and they are going to bring all of the wisdom and smart uh, ideas and things that we have talked about with this amazing panel to life on stage. Now, I am extremely excited about this panel because uh, – we kn I think that probably, I assume most folks, if you're here, understand that uh, heart disease and the things that we're talking about are a big problem. But I did not realize how big a problem uh, and how severe it was until we started kind of planning and getting ready for this event. For example, I did not know that uh, heart disease is the number one uh, killer of women more so than any form of cancer. And so part of our job here today and with this organization is to try and change some of that. And in order to do that, we need to be smarter about it, we need to know more about it. And luckily, we have an amazing panel that is gonna help us do that. So, uh, I have four folks that we are gonna uh, introduce, four amazing women who are gonna join me on stage. Um, you should and probably can applaud for each of them, but I'm gonna keep going through because we have a limited amount of time. So, with that, uh, first up, Jen Altoff is a communications supervisor and emergency medical dispatcher for North Memorial Health Ambulance since 2014. She has been working steadily on efforts to decrease the time to first compressions for victims of cardiac arrest by everybody, Jan Altov, yay! <laughs> all right, next, I know, they all deserve much slower and more generous uh, introductions, but they only gave me eight minutes. So, uh, Alicia Bravo is a cardiac arrest survivor and emergency department registered nurse at Hennepin Healthcare. A big round of applause, Alicia Bravo. Kim Harkin is program manager at the Center of Resuscitative Medicine at the University of Minnesota. Big round of applause for Kim. And last and certainly not least, Dr. Joanna Moore has been practicing emergency medicine at Hennepin Healthcare in Minneapolis since 2012. She also serves as the laboratory research director and works with Hennepin County EMS in management of cardiac arrest patients. Please, a big round of applause, Dr. Joanna Moore and all four of our amazing panelists. Okay, all right. So we have, like I said, we actually have now like seven minutes and that we have to get through this, but it's okay, because you, uh, we talked a little bit before this, and one, I just wanted to start with sort of, we're talking about CPR and the importance of that, and it's sort of a thing that you hear like, oh, CPR is important. I see people do it on uh, very important television programs, and so therefore it must be important, but can we put like an actual figure or a number on like how important it is to do CPR? Like what's the difference between if we do it or we don't do it when someone is actually suffering cardiac arrest? So <coughs> sudden cardiac arrest is literally a disease state that has a 90% mortality in America, which is amazing because on TV it doesn't look that way. No, everybody gets <laughs> back up pretty yeah, much. Yeah, that's right. I watched you know, some Grey's Anatomy, like they mostly are fine. Yeah. yeah. And so research shows, you know, seconds, literally every 30 seconds, your odds of survival decreases uh, with go, if you go without CPR. And so we have great first responders, um, EMS services, and physicians, but, you know, we can't be at the patient's bedside within 30 seconds to a minute of their cardiac arrest. Right. I think, And we heard that a little bit in Allie's uh, introduction that the mortality rate goes up pretty dramatically every... 30 seconds that something isn't done. And so then the question is, if we know that, if we know that you know every 30 seconds really makes a big difference if somebody's getting CPR or not, why aren't we all just doing it? What, is, what are the things that sort of scare us or stop us from, from doing it? So I think a lot of people are afraid to do CPR. They're afraid that they don't remember the steps or that they might do something wrong. And those types of hesitations make people pause and not start CPR right away. I mean, I, I'll be honest, CPR is, uh, right, scary to, I think, 
most people, even someone who's probably been trained in it, it's A, anytime you're dealing with life and death, but then I was in the wonderful expo out here and there was one of the, uh, someone who's actually a survivor and had had uh, CPR to save his life. And he's like, oh yeah, well they were doing CPR on me. They, they cracked one of my ribs. And I'm like, I don't wanna crack somebody's rib. That's terrifying. But if you don't do that. They, they have no chance for survival if, if nothing's done. As Joanna said, the time that passes is so important. And so that early CPR is critical. And broken ribs can be repaired. They're, they're something that we can fix. Um, but you have to make sure that they get there alive to fix them. So starting CPR and some of the minor things that can happen are all repairable. I mean, Alicia, can I ask you to maybe share your story? Because, I mean, you are literally living, breathing, like, evidence of the fact that this really matters. So, Yes. Yeah. Um, m again, my name is Alicia. I am 20, or I'm sorry, not 20. I wish I was 20. <laughs> I am 39 years old, and when I was 37, <laughs> on January, oh my gosh, why am I so nervous? I don't know. I, I You're 20. It's time. okay. It's your okay, first let's time start doing over. this. Yeah. On July 1st. 2017, that's where I was getting the 20 from. I had a swimming training for a triathlon at my parents' uh, home in Wisconsin. And I was uh, going to swim across the lake and run home. And I asked my dad to trail me in a boat. Uh, he and along with my sister, my brother-in-law, my three nieces, and uh, my youngest son were all trailing me in the boat. And I was swimming for about five minutes. And I stopped and looked at my dad. And I mouthed the words, help. Um, he flew through a flotation device at me, and I just wasn't responding in the water. And my sister uh, jumped in the water and swam to me, and I whispered the word breathe two times to her before going lifeless in the water. And she swam my body back to the boat, and my dad lifted me out of the boat and knew I didn't have a pulse and I wasn't breathing, and he immediately started CPR. I had uh, chest compressions and the Lucas machine on me, which was out in the demonstration area, for 20 minutes I had CPR before I was defibrillated out of ventricular fibrillation. Um, I'm an ER nurse. I've performed CPR countless times, and I never once thought it would happen to me. And I have never been such a bigger advocate for inspiring everyone to learn CPR, and you can save a life. I am living proof. I mean, that is a very powerful story. That is amazing. Thank you for it. One of the other, I, I wanted to touch on one of the other challenges or hurdles, because uh, CPR, we've established, generally kind of scary. But then there's also, we also have research and studies that show women are m less likely to get CPR than men if they are going into cardiac arrest. And I'm wondering if anyone can sort of jump, why? Do we have some theories as to why that happens and then maybe how we can start to think about closing that gap? Well, I think it's generally s scarier on a woman just because, um, you know, you have to potentially remove clothing. And those are some of the hurdles that people will hesitate. I think the other thing is, is that often when we look at who is getting trained in CPR, we see a lot of women attending CPR classes, primarily because they're caring for the children or it may be something in their job that they need to get training. And so with a large portion of cardiac arrest happening in a private home, often the person who's trained in CPR, if it's the woman, when she collapses, nobody else knows what to Can do. Can we, I, I'm gonna just call this out and underscore this like <laughs> that. So, because you're being very nice and polite about it, saying like, oh, women are more likely to go and get the CPR training. Another way of putting that is like, men are kind of crapping out here, like, <laughs> and not doing, <laughs> not, not pulling their weight. Like they aren't going and getting uh, like the CPR training. <laughs> They're just leaving it to the women to do it, which is lame. Uh, to say the least, yeah. And so th that seems like part of it is to try and close some of that gap that m I, I, if you are a man who is in the audience, you should be going and getting CPR. If you know a man, uh, you should tell that person to go get CPR. Um, if you don't know any men, wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so, um, it can also be your children, your other family members. I mean, children obviously know, can learn CPR and have performed it and saved many lives. And this is actually, we heard just a bit about this, but uh, you helped, am I correct? You helped work on this bill that made it so 
all high schoolers in Minnesota now learn CPR? Is that a, a correct? Yes, there is a mandate that requires CPR training for all students at least one time between grades 7 and 12 in Minnesota high schools, which is really training a whole generation of lifesavers that will impact some of those statistics. That is very cool. That is a very powerful yeah. thing. Cause so <laughs> at some point, everyone's going to get it. Um, and yet, you, you learn it in high school. And I imagine a lot of us probably maybe took CPR class once. Maybe we <laughs> thought about it once. And then, I don't know, we, we just let it go. We dropped it. We didn't pick it back up. Or uh, we learned it in a different way than it used to be. And so I'm wondering, and I'll come down to the end, like if, if we're in that space where we're like, oh, I remember I'm supposed to do something. I'm supposed to right. uh, step on the chest and I'm supposed to slap the person. I don't know, what well am I supposed to do? The good news is if you do dial 911, the dispatchers will take you through every step of the way, including providing emotional support, coaching you. Um, so if you don't have your CPR training, uh, emergency medical dispatchers will take you through chest compressions until first responders get there. So no fear that you're doing it the wrong way. And this is a really important piece that as a program uh, we're, we're talking about today, you are trained in talking folks through CPR as a dispatcher, and a lot of dispatchers are, but not all of them because right, it's not right. mandated. Um, so we are working in Minnesota um, towards legislation to have all public safety answering points, all 911 centers um, have a protocol in place to be able to provide CPR. So that is in the works right now, and it's exciting times to do that. And we are specifically asking folks here in this room, and there is in the resource center behind us, the, the expo that's there, a way to contact your legislators and say, this is something we want. We think that every 911 dispatcher, every EMS dispatcher should know how to talk people through uh, this. Right. So we're looking at uh, different ways where we can make that happen, whether it's those centers themselves becoming certified to do it or transferring to a, a center who is already uh, providing medical dispatch. I wanted to come back over here. I, again, we, we've established it's, this is really important. I, it really does, like, it can double or even triple the chance of survival for someone if you are doing CPR. Um, we've established some of the reasons why um, it's sort of scary. And so I guess I, as sort of a closing piece, I, I just ask each of you, like, how, uh, we're talking about legislation, we're talking about uh, sort of people should do this, but how do we actually start? Like, let's just, hopefully, folks here are feeling very motivated. They're thinking, yeah, I get it, this is important. What do we do? What do you do from here? I think <coughs> if you don't know how to do CPR on somebody, you should learn. And <coughs> if you do know, then you need to spread the word. And then th the most important thing as an emergency physician, I see this time and time again, when a crisis happens, people are stuck in the moment. They're scared. They're not realizing what's happening. And you have to not be afraid. You have to just do it. If someone's not breathing and they're not responsive, just start CPR. You're not going to hurt them. What if they're? What if you start doing it and then it turns out that they were just like hanging out? Yeah, they'll wake up. <laughs> 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 so, a lot of so, uh, you know, we work. I work down the street um, in the emergency department, and we have a lot of types of patients who come in, um, and people are out laying on the sidewalk, intoxicated or sleeping or you know whatever they're doing. Um, Often they'll wake up and say, stop doing that. Perfect. You're not in cardiac arrest. <laughs> you know, no harm done. Um, sometimes those people are really sick for another reason. And, you know, when, when I'm seeing them in the emergency department, the issue of I got CPR and my ribs broken or my chest hurts, like, it doesn't, doesn't come up. Um, so I would not be afraid that you're going to hurt somebody. And then, but the most important thing is if you do CPR on somebody and you save their life, wow, you know, the, the, the benefit is so much greater than, than the risk there. That's beautiful, so be brave. Yeah. Step one. Be brave, yeah. yeah. What else, again, it, uh, folks here are <laughs> paying attention, they're motivated, they've got a lunch in their stomach, they're like, I wanna do something. What, what, what should we be asking them or pushing them to do? Well, I think there's lots of opportunities to learn CPR. Um, if you don't have that opportunity or if you haven't come across the opportunity, there's a lot of online resources that have short videos on how to do CPR. There's even some fun CPR videos that the American Heart Association has off 
that really just show those basic steps. And if you feel like you need a refresher or you're unsure, watch those videos because honestly, doing something is always better than doing nothing. And we should, so we're, we're in a world now where we do hands-free, or hands-free CPR, yeah, where you just throw your <laughs> whole body at it. No, uh, hands-only CPR, right? Right. Yep. So wait, can we just, why, because I, when I learned CPR originally, uh, I was a lifeguard, and you had to do like two breaths, 15 compressions, two breaths, 15 compressions. Now we're saying just do the hands part. Is that a fair uh, characterization? Right. Um, uh, studies have shown that um, increased survival rates happen when uh, you can do continuous compressions. Our EMDs, our medical dispatchers are providing um, continuous compressions for long periods of time because uh, that blood that's within the uh, uh, circulatory system is circulating throughout the body and, and um, it's increasing survival rates. So starting early, continuous compressions is really important. And maybe this is just a quick moment to pause and say, what is happening when we are doing that CPR? Because if we're only doing the hands part, what, what, are we, what are we actually doing there? How is it actually helping someone? So cardiac arrest is a disease state where literally your heart is not working. It's not pumping. It's not providing blood pressure or perfusion to the rest of your body. And the most important part that it's not perfusing is your brain. So when you're pumping on somebody's chest, you're providing blood flow to the whole body, including the brain. You're, you're functioning as that person's heart. Okay. So we've got be brave. We are going to uh, learn CPR to be someone's heart. And do we have two last, what should folks do when they're, they're done here today? I would like each of you to go home and talk to your loved one, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your neighbor, the person behind you at Target, anyone, and just say, do you know CPR? And if you don't, or if you don't yourself, or you maybe you haven't done it since you took it in high school, you need to learn it, and you need to be confident and you need to spread the word and talk about it because trust me, you want to surround yourself with people that can save your life. Chances are if you have a cardiac arrest, it will not be in the hospital. So you want people around you and you want every single person you know to be able to do this fairly easy skill. Lastly, I just want to add, um, oftentimes we don't recognize those symptoms of uh, that precede cardiac arrest events, so it's really important to make uh, awareness, um, especially in women too, they can present a little bit differently. Um, upper back, uh, jaw, neck, shoulder, not only the chest discomfort. So recognizing those symptoms and dialing 911 early is really important. On that note, on these four amazing women who have shared both their uh, own stories and really valuable, important information, uh, please, can we do a tremendous round of applause? Uh, Jan Altoff, Alicia Bravo, Kim Harkins, Dr. Joanna Moore, thank you so much. They have absolutely been wonderful. We are gonna, we are gonna trade places here. Uh, they are here. So, what happens now? Uh, I am gonna turn the stage over to the cast of the Theater of Public Policy, who's been listening to that entire conversation, all about the importance of CPR and some of the challenges and struggles with it. Their job is to turn that all into entirely unscripted improv comedy theater. So everything they do is entirely made up, on the spot, <laughs> off the top of their heads. Be generous uh, and make a big round of applause for the Theater of Public Policy. Ooh, ooh. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Um, uh, 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 who, uh, uh, can I touch you? Uh, uh, I feel conflicted because uh, I'm a man. I know, and I'm a little weird because I'm gay, and I just uh, feel like. Uh, 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 they didn't teach me this in football class. Uh, um, I wanna, they really should have. <laughs> they really should have. Um, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, may, I, I know. Yes. I learned it by hand. Oh. Whoa, that's 30 seconds. Oh. oh uh, Wait, I'm so conflicted. You seem fine. Okay, but maybe I just time don't know out. the All oh. right, both of you fail. We're going to have to go to study hall. No. No. Thank you, Mrs. Thompson. You're welcome. Excellent demonstration. Oh. I have football practice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is mandatory for all high schoolers. You can't just let your teacher lay there on the floor. Oh. Miss Smith, oh. I, like, I, just, like, I felt really uncomfortable. Like I, was, like I was like, I wanted to, like, I don't know, do I take her shirt off? I don't do know. I, like, 
She's my English teacher. Should I tell her a sonnet? No. Maybe she's, I'm, I'm, I'm making a move. I'm not making a You're move. You're not making a move. No one's thinking that. She's on the floor. Well, uh, what, what if You she... had good instincts. You kneeled down next to her. I you... squatted. No, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> that is not helpful. Uh, and isn't it appropriate to ask for consent in this situation? You I know, that is like a great question. It's a big conversation. I think it's safe to assume. You know what? Not assume. If someone's on the floor lifeless, they want your help. But what if I break her ribs with my man muscle? Oh, <laughs> oh, um, Thomas, I have to tell you that you don't have your man muscles yet. Why? Because if you did, you'd know to just take care of someone who needs help. Oh. Why don't you know that? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Linda? Yeah. Jennifer, um, uh, uh, I've, yeah. I've yeah. made a decision. Um, Great. If, cool. If there's ever a time where I need CPR, Yes. I would like Jennifer to do it. Oh. Uh, because I feel like, you know, I thought about the time you helped me run for student council and, yeah. you know, you stood up on my side at my wedding even though you weren't a groomsman and, yeah. you know, we've had some good times, but uh, if I want someone to save my life, oh, I want I feel it like to be my best friend. Yeah, oh. you're breaking up with me, aren't you? No, this no, is how you want to uh, tell me. Don't get me wrong, I still want you to save my life if Jennifer's not around. Oh. It's, it's just, you know, if, if you're both there, you can get the AED. <sighs> huh? That's still fun, right? That's like silver yeah. to gold, right? And I'm supposed to be happy with this. And you this. can call 911. <sighs> you can talk to the dispatcher. Okay. I don't really feel like I'm winning a prize here. This is an honor. I mean, Chad, I enjoy being your best friend, but you're putting a lot on me. Like, what if you go into the men's room and something happens? I can't go in there. I'll go in, I'll go in. If you, if you fall down in the men's room, I'm not afraid. I didn't think about that. <laughs> or what if you're at work? I am not an accountant. I work at the zoo. Oh no. I've got to get some more best friends everywhere <laughs> I'm at. I don't You'll have time for this. I don't have time for this. I'm just going to do it myself. No, you I'm know, just going to do it myself. It's okay. <laughs> nope, you're I, stressing me out, Daryl, and I just feel like I'm having uh, like the palpitations and the things. I mean, I just, you didn't even take the class. You don't listen to me. You don't respect. I'm just going to, I don't think there's enough pressure. I'm feeling a little woozy, and it's just like the men in this family just expect <laughs> me to do every, oh, you think this is a uh, joke? Yeah, no, no, the King of Queens is on. It's a show that's been running forever. You know, Usually I, I only see it at the gym. Okay. What? You I, said no, you had it handled. No, I, no, I had it handled because I feel like maybe you're not stepping up and I've taken the initiative to take the CPR classes to maybe potentially save your life, save the children's life, and obviously my own. And I feel hurt right now. And my, you're doing it right now. I'm so conflicted. Because I want to be there for you. I remember our wedding vows. To death do us part. part. Yeah. And I thought this was you saying like, peace. <laughs> but I understand that you want to be in this and I want to be in this too. So why don't, why don't you help me? What do I do? Put your hand on my heart. Extend your arms. Lock your elbows. Whoa. Jeez, be gentle. <laughs> it's like our honeymoon all over again. <laughs> Acapulco. Put this hand over the other and just keep pushing. I'll keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. Don't forget to lock your elbows. You're not doing okay. it Lock my right. elbows. Lock, lock my elbows. elbows. Then how am I supposed to move to do the compression? You use your body weight. Body weight. Watch body my weight. chest. Body weight. Body weight. Watch Spread your chest. Body Give the weight. blood to my brain so that I make better decisions when picking a partner. <laughs> I still love ah, it. <laughs> extra, 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 read all about it. Top news, top news of the day. Everybody tweet this out, Instagram this out. One piece of news, CPR. Three letters, CPR. Just tell everybody about it. Everybody, tweet it out. Tweet it, tweet it. <laughs> the 
But there's no hashtag or like any clear. We don't need it. It's just three letters. How's it gonna three go viral? It's don't worry, people will care. I, is it a new music genre? Yeah. No, like country <laughs> progressive rap. No, it's just taking care of each other. Oh. It's a skill you should know. I know it. Okay. Hey, here's a dollar. CPR. Nice. <laughs> yeah? Here's a promotion. CPR. CPR. Spread it around like a virus. Hey, you look great today. CPR. Yes. Hey, yes. hey here's a hug. CPR. CPR. That's right. <laughs> okay. I okay. I know uh, I know what to do. Uh, hand hands free. Hands-free CPR. Okay. Uh, ooh, okay. Uh, get on the ground. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Hands-free. I can do two at once. Uh, uh, no mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. That's not necessary. Uh, we just gotta keep the heart pumping. And I think maybe, Debbie, if I just, right. uh... No, okay. no, no! What? You got this. You but got think smart this. about this. Also, it. time is ticking away. And the simulation will be over in 45 seconds. Okay, um... Hey, hey, not the people's elbow. You are not Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, Kevin, how do I do hands-free CPR if I can't do mouth-to-mouth? -mouth? Uh, um... Follow your heart. Be my heart. Be my heart. I get it. With your hands. Oh, put my <laughs> hands on my heart and my heart to your heart. Be my heart. Okay, uh, hands free. <laughs> heart to heart. Kevin, heart I don't think heart. this is gonna work. Heart to heart. I want, <laughs> want to <laughs> say what about me? Heart to heart. Heart to heart. I still feel like this um, is not exactly what the chorus was saying. I think it means just like, I'm confused. You gotta use your hands. Yeah. You and, gotta. <laughs> and I think if there's one thing to learn from this entire course, is that CPR, while it is hard to learn, is very important to learn. And sometimes it really is, the more you know. <laughs> Be my heart. <laughs> Public policy, yeah!